Hi, this is Dr. Song. If you've done enough cataract surgeries, you'll know that small pupils show up more often than you'd think. And as we all know, small pupils make surgery tougher and raise the risk of complications. Oftentimes, they come with other issues too, like weak zonules. So what do you usually do in these cases? When you're just starting out, I highly recommend using a pupil expansion device. Having a clear surgical view is absolutely critical. But as you get more comfortable with surgery, you start running into those borderline cases. You find yourself asking, should I just go ahead like this or should I put in a ring? Since I'm still growing and learning as a surgeon myself, I used to always choose the safest, most reliable option whenever I wasn't sure. But now I've set my own guidelines, clear boundaries, and I stick to them consistently. So today I want to share some tips for doing cataract surgery in small pupils. Let's get into it. Right, I've set my own guideline for using a pupil expander. At a pupil size of 5.5 millimeters. If it's smaller than that, I just use it no matter what. If it's larger, I try without it. That's because I still find it difficult to perform capsular hexis when the CCC margin isn't fully visible. Of course, more experienced surgeons can do it, even with a really small pupil. But at the end of the day, safety is the most important thing. Knowing your own limits and setting a clear standard helps with quick decision making. You just follow the guideline. Small pupils often come with floppy iris. So during hydrodissection, you should inject only a small amount to avoid a spike in intraocular pressure. Once the iris prolapses and you start messing with it, the pupil keeps getting smaller and the surgery becomes much more challenging. What nucleofractus technique works best in small pupils? You can use any technique, but divide and conquer or vertical chop might be safer since most of the manipulation happens in the central area. That said, if you're confident, horizontal chop can also be done safely. First, always make sure the nucleus rotates. And when you bring the chopper to the equator of the nucleus, you need to scrape along the central endonucleus to ensure the chopper goes under the anterior capsule. In small pupil cases, this step needs to be done even more carefully than usual. And it's best to crack the nucleus all the way down to the posterior plate until you get a good red reflex like this. That way, it becomes much easier to manage the fragments in a tight surgical field. Now you can see it more clearly. By starting the chopper tip from the center and making sure it touches the endonucleus under the cortex, it goes securely under the anterior capsule, making horizontal chopping possible. Even after a shallow initial chop, a deeper second attempt allowed me to split the nucleus into quarter fragments. Now it's time to eat the nucleus. In small pupils, it's especially important to keep the phaco tip more central than usual. If you step on the pedal near the periphery, the iris can get dragged in, leading to iris damage. Also, it's best not to do anything in the peripheral area that's hidden under the iris. That's why in these cases, the nucleus needs to be cracked thoroughly and cleanly. Only then can you bring the fragments to the center using just vacuum and flow and safely emulsify them. When removing the cortex with I and A, rather than taking it out bit by bit, it's more effective to move tangentially along the periphery and remove as much as possible in one go.
As always, be extra careful when working in the sub-incisional area. To make sure everything is cleared, you can use the chopper to gently push the iris and check any unclear spots. That helps confirm complete removal. That's it for today. My personal red line when dealing with small pupils. What is your red line? If you found this helpful, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.